Hello. Hello. I'm Micah. I'm Tiffany. And we are Margay and Ben Tarong. And in this video, Tiff's going to show you how to make a sun catcher for mom. Tiff, who's this video for? Uh, this video is for beginners who want to learn a little bit about wire wrapping or just how to make a sun catcher. Anybody who wants to get a little bit crafty. And we have to put out one video a week about the stuff that Tiffany makes in her shop and bonus content about how our shop grew to the top 1% in sales on Etsy. If you are already subscribed, you will receive notifications automatically. If you'd like to subscribe, hit that button down there below and ring the bell and like the video. Thank you. Okay. Is that a good place to start? Okay, yeah, I think so. Wow, that's a pretty one. Oh, I like that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, okay, so we're gonna do the intro. Um, okay. Okay, so here we have, uh, when you open your box, you're going to have your frame. Um, and then you're also going to have all of your different components, wire and crystal in this bag here. I would highly recommend grabbing a dish or a small bowl or something that you can put these loose beads in, uh, just so that if you bump the table or if you, uh, if something, you know, you don't, your beads don't go flying around everywhere. Um, wrapped in this little tissue paper is the uh, brass ring that you are going to use to hang your sun catcher. So you can go ahead and take that out. Can you grab me the dish? Yeah. <laughs> uh, here we have your crystal prism. Ooh, so sparkly. These are the different size beads. There are three different sizes for the crystals that are going to be hanging from the bottom and from the top. So the big one, biggest one here is an eight millimeter, six millimeter, and then four millimeter. This seems really zoomed out, actually. Uh, and then for this pre-strung uh, strand here, they've already been arranged in the color scheme. Here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Um, so I would leave, you're gonna leave all of these as is, and we are going to make the sun catcher and just follow the sequence of the crystals and just leave them there. So easy peasy. So we're going to set that aside. Um, you're going to have two sets of wire. One is a thinner gauge wire. One is a thicker gauge wire. This is going to be to hang the drop and the top link segment of your sun catcher. And the thinner wire is going to be to wrap your crystal onto the frame. So I like to start with the uh, hanging, the loose moving parts first. So that will be the top uh, link segment as well as the bottom link segment. So we are going to unwrap this and you're just going to straighten this out carefully. You don't want to just start pulling like that. You want to actually kind of reverse the uh, curves that it's already in. So you don't want to just pull it straight because you might get a weird kink in there and you don't want that to happen, especially with thicker, thicker the wire the uh, worst kinks can be. So we're just gonna work with this entire length. So we're gonna leave it as is. And we are going to start by attaching this brass ring to the first link. Um, so for anyone that is totally new to jewelry making, um, we're gonna show you first how to do a loop. And we're gonna start a loop by first uh, doing about maybe an inch and a half or two inches. I usually use my two finger knuckles to measure the, the length that I need. You're gonna start by making a right angle and then you're gonna move down just a little bit, maybe like two widths apart. And then I like to kind of make the loop using the same spot in the pliers. So somewhere in the middle is easy. So you're gonna move down a little bit. You're gonna do a half rotation there and then you're going to use your hand and just pull taut. So you see how that is kind of going to the side there? 
easy fix for that is just put the loop back in the pliers and pull the stem just like that. So now you have a nice right angle there. So before we close the loop, we are going to snap the ring in here just like that. And you're going to use your chain nose pliers, which are these pointy ones with the flat, flat interior of the jaws. And we are going to grip the loop. So you want to brace both sides, uh, like brace across the loop here without actually smashing this spot where the, the wires cross over each other. Because if you do that, if you smash that, they will actually cut into each other and you will end up with a cut, a, a compromised loop. So try and grab the loop so that it also grips the other side here. Let me see if I could zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, so what happens is if you, ac if you only grab one side of the loop, when you try and start working with it, you're, you see how the loop is turning? So just make sure you reach all the way across the loop there without smashing that cross section. You're going to take your other pliers. Oh, sorry. Cool, I can't. Yeah, let me, let me do that. Okay, first, we made the loop. Actually, this is all messed up because we're redoing this because I was out of shot. Okay. So Once you brace the loop, Sorry, I was out of shot, so I, that's why my wire's all kinked up. I had to redo this. So you can use your fingers to start, start the coil at first if you want. Um, sometimes I do that. Using fingers is kind of second nature. Um, you're going to take your, once it gets shorter though, you don't want to be using your fingers because uh, your hands will get really fatigued. So we're going to kind of uh, be doing, so rotate around and then switch positions with your hand and the pliers. And then you're going to rotate behind. Um, and then I like to do a double a layered co coil here. So we're going to start going back up. So I use my fingers to kind of change, move the direction. So it's going upwards. And then you're going to continue that same method of doing, oops, half rotations around until you go back up to where your pliers are at. And Actually, that worked out. Sometimes you'll have to snit, uh, cut the excess. Well, when you cut the excess, we'll, we'll, we'll show you in a second. But Okay, so for the first link, we are going to take this four millimeter bead and thread that through. We're going to repeat the steps of making a loop. So you're going to give yourself a little bit of room here because we're going to have a coil to close off the, the link. So you're going to make a right angle. You're going to move down a little bit. You're going to make a half turn. And then you're going to use your hand and just guide the wire around. And then you're going to grip. This is a lot easier to grip without something in that loop there. So you're going to grip and then just start wrapping around with your fingers. You have a lot of wire to work with, so it's a lot easier to grab. Um, once we get the coil down to the bead, we're going to start moving back upwards again. And then once you meet up with your pliers, we can, oops, that's not it. We can snip. So I like to snip about halfway into the barrel of that coil there. And if you have entry level cutters, you might need to wiggle a bit. There you go. And there should be an end sticking out. We're just going to tuck that. You're going to tuck that in right there, just so it's close to the nice and snug. All right, you have your first link now, hooray. And then if your link is a little bit wonky, like if it's like that or something, you can just use your hand, grip it, and then grip the loop here and rotate so that the loops are, are on the same uh, plane or facing the right direction, whatever. Okay, next link here. We're going to um, repeat the first steps. So make a right angle, move down a little bit, do a half turn, and then use your hands, bring the loop over. And then before we close the loop, we're going to hook that link in. Ta-da! All right, and then we're going to try and scooch the pliers in here. Um, so you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to smash this crossover point of the wire. 
You also don't want to smash this other link into the loop either. So try and get right in between both. There we go, just like that. And then we are going to do half turn, half turn over, half turn behind. I usually will do two wraps and then I'll start changing, start moving the coil upwards. So I usually use my fingers just to change direction. And then we're gonna continue wrapping. And all right, looks like it's meeting up with my pliers. So that's a good spot to cut. So we're gonna cut about halfway into the barrel of that coil there. Oop. Okay. And then we're just gonna tuck that, tuck that in. All right. And we are threading this six millimeter bead here. There we go. And we're just gonna repeat the same loop making process. So give a little bit of space for closing. We're gonna close off with the coil. So you're gonna give some room, make a right angle, go down a little bit, make a half turn, use your hands and bring the wire over. So if you see if your link is kind of wonky like that, just put it back in there and then you can actually just push Push the link, oops, is it not, not in focus, there we go. You just push the link straight so that it's nice and straight like that. Okay, so you're gonna grip this, eh, let's move this down. You're gonna grip that and take your hands, use your fingers and just start wrapping. And then once you meet up with the bead, you can start moving back upwards towards your pliers. All right, and we are going to snip oop, about halfway into the barrel of that coil. And then we're going to tuck. And we have one more link to make. I just straighten that a little bit. Take your eight millimeter crystal. Well, we're gonna make another right angle. Move down a little bit. Do a half turn, bring that over, and then we're gonna lock that link in. And then we are going to brace this so that we can wrap this wire around. So we're gonna half turn behind, half rotation around front, and then behind. And then I usually use my fingers to guide so that it will overlap. It'll layer on top of the previous wraps I just did. And then I will finish off with the pliers. I'm just gonna go around. Okay, sometimes it, the length works out perfectly to where you may not need to cut anything. Actually, I think we should still trim that. So we're just gonna trim a tiny bit. All right. And we're gonna tuck that. So it's gonna thread, we're gonna thread the wire through this eight millimeter crystal. And here's a part that is a little tricky. So we're gonna make the same loop, you know, give a little space for you to have a coil there, make a right angle, you're gonna move down a little bit, do a half turn, use your hands to bring the wire over. So we are gonna leave this open because we're gonna connect this later. So don't wrap this closed. Uh, just give yourself the same amount of length. So maybe two finger knuckles of length here. And we're gonna snip and leave that for later. Okay, so now we are going to work on this crystal drop here. This is gonna be the very last dangling part of the sun catcher. You're gonna take these copper spacer beads and we are going to make a, you're gonna make me, maybe use like a single finger knuckle of length and we're gonna make a sharp angle, a little bit more narrow than a right angle. And then we are going to put one copper spacer bead on there we're gonna put this crystal drop. 
And this is just a nice decorative way to um, not have your whole of the crystal that visible. So on the other side, we're gonna put this other spacer bead. So now you should, it should look like this. So one side has a sharp, uh, sharp bend, and then we're gonna try and get the pliers as close as we can. Now you wanna make another sharp bend. Actually, the pliers are kind of thick, so you might actually just do better using your fingers, just like that. So you want them to be pretty angled like that and cross over. And then right where they cross over, see if you can bend it straight upwards like that, right where they meet, just like that. So then it should look like this. You can grip that just like you would as if, if you just pretend this is a big loop right here. And we are going to do the same. So we're gonna wrap behind, come around the front, go around behind. And I usually like to do maybe two or three, two and a half wraps there. And then we're just gonna snip really close if we can. Be careful not to cut, you know, your actual this, this long wire or any other part. So try and just cut the part that's sticking out. All right. And we're gonna tuck that. And now it should look like this. So we are going to make a loop just like we did before, but you can kind of brace against the coil there. So pull, pull the wire down against that coil. Um, and then go move down a little bit, just like we have been, and you're gonna do a half turn like that. Use your fingers to complete the loop around your pliers. And now you have a loop there. You're gonna grip that, and you're gonna use your fingers and just wrap around until you cover that original coil. There we go. So we can snip that about halfway, you wanna do the halfway point again uh, into that barrel there. Halfway into where the, the, the two, these two straight parts meet up. That way you can tuck it right there. Perfect. Now you should have your finished drop. And if it looks a little crooked, I kind of like to rotate so that it's uh, nice and perpendicular with the front of the teardrop. So it should be front facing like that. All right, so for the next link, we are going to grab our four millimeter crystal um, and we're gonna keep, continue on with the same steps as before. So we're gonna give ourselves maybe two knuckles worth of length here, make a right angle, go down a little bit, half turn, Use your hands to guide the wire around the pliers. And then before you close the loop, make sure you hook your teardrop into that. And you're gonna brace by reaching across this loop with the pliers without smashing any of the other wires that are in that loop. You're gonna rotate around, around the front, behind. And then I like to use my hands to guide the wire to start going upwards. And we're gonna finish this wrap. We're gonna go around and see if we need to cut that. Yeah, I will trim that a little bit. And then we're just gonna tuck. And let's thread this four millimeter bead. Okay. And then we're going to continue. So give yourself some room for the coil that we're going to make. Make a right angle, move down a little bit, do a half turn, use your fingers to bring the wire over and then we can close this off. Uh, Cause we're going to, oh, sorry, I'm moving around too much. So we're gonna wrap until we get to the crystal and then we're gonna start moving back up. Usually it's a couple times just to layer over and then we're gonna snip about 
halfway into the width of the barrel of that coil so that we can tuck that loose end. It's just a tiny movement. Check our link, make sure it looks kind of straight. It's a little bit rotated, so I'm just gonna turn it so that the loops are totally lined up there. All right, next link. So same steps, about two finger knuckles. Make a right angle, you're gonna move down a little bit, do a half turn, and then bring your wire around. We're going to snap this into place. And you're gonna reach your pliers and across the loop to brace without smashing any of those other bits in there. We're gonna rotate her behind, in front, behind, in front. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to just kind of change direction a little bit and start moving it upwards. Sometimes you can use your fingers for up to that part too. Looks like we have gone up to the top there. So we are going to snip this extra wire and we're gonna tuck. Okay, so that was the four millimeter. We're gonna move on to this six millimeter. Now you have a printout of your uh, sun catcher, so it has, it's supposed to be life size, so just use that if you're not sure which one's four millimeter, which one's six millimeter, it should match what is on your printout. So we're gonna leave some space for the coil there, make a right angle, and then move down a little bit, do a half turn, and then bring the wire over. We're gonna brace and wrap. until we meet the crystal there. And we're gonna start bringing it back up. It's a really subtle movement when you bring the, when you start wrapping back upwards. You don't wanna create like such a sharp turn. It's a very, very subtle change in direction. Okay, so we're gonna tuck that. Check our link, make sure it looks straight. Looks like I could do just a slight adjustment there. And, Last link, eight millimeter crystal here. Same thing, you're gonna give yourself maybe two knuckles of length, right angle, go down a little bit, make that half turn, finish the loop, and then before you close the loop, make sure you hook the rest of the dangles there. You're gonna brace with your chain nose pliers here. Take your other pliers, whatever they may be. If they came with our kit, it'll be your round nose pliers. And then we're going to make a subtle change of direction there and start moving upwards until we run out of space because of our pliers. And that looks a little bit long, so I'm just gonna give it a little trim so that it's short enough to kind of stay within the boundaries of the barrel right here of the coil when I tuck it. All right, we're gonna put this eight millimeter crystal on. Okay, here comes the slightly tricky part. Sometimes you get so, you know, used to the flow of making these loops. So we're gonna continue and give a little space for your coil, make a right angle, go down a little bit, do a half turn, and then bring it around. Okay, yeah, sometimes you get so, you know, you're so zen doing this loop making that you just close it off. But remember, we're gonna connect this later, so let's leave this open. Let's measure off maybe two knuckles of length here. Give it a snip. You might have some extra leftover wire. And you can use that for maybe something else if you have some beads lying around at home. So here's that. Yay! Moving on to the fun, colorful part. Okay, so we are going to leave the, the, all the crystals on here. They're attached, they're threaded through some copper wire, so we are going to straighten this wire, and you can use your uh, chain nose, or if you have flat nose pliers, to kind of crimp this straight so that the crystals can pass over without any major kinks. So let's just straighten, make sure it's all, I just kind of rotate the wire around and crimp 
press down lightly in several directions so that it's nice and straight. Okay, so we'll leave that there. Uh, let's grab our thinner wire gauge here. It should be wrapped up for you. And then same thing with this. When you straighten this, just be careful. Uh, you know, do it slowly so that you can catch any, make sure, you know, it doesn't tangle or anything. So it looks like, see, there's like a little spot here. I probably will just pull open that loop so that it doesn't turn into a knot. And then for this, we're going to straighten by just uncoiling like this. Just hold it really tight between your fingers and pull through. All right. Okay, so we're going to start maybe somewhere right here. So when you start wrapping, I usually will create a fold like that just to start off with. Actually, let's hold this upside down. That makes more sense. So you see, I have a fold, and you want some length so that you have uh, you could, you know, you have some leverage here. You don't want too short because the wire will just kind of slip off. It'll totally straighten when you when you pull. So hold this length down like that and do a couple of coils around the frame. So I like to use my finger and keep the pulling uh, tension as close to the frame as I can. So I usually will thread it through like this, wrap it around like that. And just be careful because your wire might get a little tangled. So you have this little end here. You can continue the coil if you want or you can cut off that excess. I just like to have as much, you know, bracing stuff. Oh, it looks like it scooted a little bit. Okay, so that tiny end there. So you're just gonna tuck that in, just like we've been, lots of tucking. We've been tucking about. Um, okay, now we can start the wire bead wrapping. So you're going to take off this first crystal, which is clear. Just make sure you keep your bead strand here somewhere safe so that you don't drop everything everywhere. Okay, these crystals are a bicone shape. Uh, I guess it's hard to see because this is a very tiny one, but if you look closely, it's like, it's like two cones put together and then the drill hole goes like this. So it's kind of like a round, almost like a round diamond. So it does have flat edges. So I'm going to put the bead on and I'm gonna brace the bead and just thread the wire through. Oh no, looks like we got a little kink forming. Careful of that. And you're going to try and line up the flat edge of the crystal so that it lies against the frame there. So you're going to brace that crystal and just pull the wire straight down like that. And you're gonna wrap that through. So I do one wrap around and then I will put the next crystal on. And you're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna thread that on. You're gonna line it up so that the flat edge kind of sits against the wire frame and brace it with your fingers. Thread the wire through and just pull straight down and go around one time and then when you come back over we are going to uh, put the next crystal Doink. okay we're gonna repeat so this part can be kind of calming it's a it's a very repetitive part of beading and wire wrapping you just kind of do this over and over um, uh, there is some movement, so if you feel like you accidentally wrapped one of these like way out here or something, you can just kind of scoot it in so it's a little sits a little closer. Uh, when we get to these thicker edges here, you won't be able to scoot your wire the way it moves over here because it's it's a lot it's a different thickness. So, okay, we're threading. This is a four millimeter crystal here. We're gonna line up the straight edge of the crystal against the frame, pull straight down. Don't pull so tight because you could crack your crystal. So just pull it snug and then wrap it around. And we're gonna put the next one. 
You're going to thread that doink and line up the flat end, flat it straight edge of the crystal, pull straight down and push the wire through. After that wrap, we're going to move on to the next crystal. All right. Line that up straight. So you want to check in occasionally and just look at it, make sure the spacing looks okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, unless you're really anal like me. <laughs> so then sometimes I want everything to be as perfect as possible. All right, so you can also hold this up to the printout of the finished piece if you wanna try and line things up just like that. But I think a lot of people like to just kind of go with the flow and do their own thing because it's their work and uh, you know, it's part of the fun of making stuff. Okay, so these are called briolets, these teardrop crystals there. Um, so we are going to actually thread all three of them at the same time. So this is a fun technique that I use in quite a few of my designs. This forms like the little flower part or floret or whatever part of this design. So we're gonna put all three teardrops next to each other without wrapping anything yet. We're gonna thread this last one on. Okay, so now this is actually going to be a little bit different. So you are going to continue as if you were, as if you would wrap, but you are going to try and line it up so that they sit in a shape like this, like a, like a spread out petal shape. Is that in focus? Um, However, I just realized, I think I need to wrap a few times because as you see, the, the crystal can't lie, lie flat against the frame. Uh, so we need to do some, some bare wraps here. So you can actually leave these on and just scoot them down and do an, a few extra wraps here so that So let's do that was like two wraps. So let's see if it'll fit now. So see I'm holding that first teardrop flat against the frame. See if there's enough space right there. I think that looks okay. Actually, let's do one more. So we're gonna wrap one more time around. Okay, here we go. Uh, sorry, that was a random Mario outburst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wahoo! Um, so cool. That looks perfect. So you want <laughs> Mario doesn't say okie dokie. <laughs> I don't know who he says. Okay, so that looks good. So we're going to continue wrapping around, but you want to have the teardrops align like this, all right? So you're not pulling super tight because you want just a tiny bit of give, but you don't want it super loose either. So you don't want it like that. You wanna try and bring them into position and use your hand to hold them there while you pull the wire against the frame and you're gonna do one wrap here. All right, so we have that wrapped. So now we are going to, I'm going to try and hold it in this position to see if that helps, does it? Okay. So you're going to do like a figure eight. You're going to weave, so you're going to go around, you're going to go behind one teardrop and then you're going to go on the other side. Hopefully this sh shot works. You're gonna go around the other side. You're not, they're gonna be a little bit floppy while you're doing this, that's okay. Um, and then you're gonna go behind that teardrop and come around the other side and go around this 
last teardrop here. I'm trying to check the camera, see if you can see that. So I basically, I went around this one, came back to the front of this one, and then went behind this one here. And then we're going around so that we can Oop. Yeah, you don't want to pull it too tight. So I try and use my fingers and hold, press them flat so that the wire will accommodate them lying in a flat position. So you're going to come back around the frame here, go around, and you're going to come back. Actually, we're going to... So if you can see the coils here, I'm going to scoot it over like lower down here like that. And then just make sure you are pressing your crystals, your teardrops flat again so that the wire doesn't get too tight around them. So we're going to do it, move the wrap down a little bit lower and then we're going to come back around the frame and we're going to repeat. So we're going to go around the front of this blue crystal we're going to move behind the adjacent crystal and then just try and make you know press them flat against each other I mean not against each other against your you know just push them flat come back around and we're gonna go around the frame here all right just don't pull too tight okay there you go. So now they're kind of held in place because we just did like a, a weave around the teardrops. Oh wait, sorry. Is that in focus? Okay, so we're gonna repeat that. So we're gonna go around one teardrop to the front of the neighboring teardrop and then we're gonna go behind the last teardrop and go back around the frame here. So it's kind of like you're doing a figure eight, except, you know, a, this is three drops, so it's not really a figure eight. It's like a content, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, and then now that you've wrapped around the frame, we're gonna do that one more time. So around the front of this teardrop going behind the neighboring teardrop and then back around to the front of this one. Oops, and then around the frame again. So once you have them secured with that first, uh, you know, inter, interweaving, you can pull this, you know, second round of, uh, of wrappings a little tighter. And then that should form this little floret shape. Ta-da! This is actually um, a slightly intermediate, I mean, not really intermediate, but slightly intermediate uh, technique. So, you know, it takes a little bit of care. Okay, so just like the other side, we're gonna do some extra wrappings here. So since this teardrop takes up a bunch of space before we can fit the next crystal. So we're gonna continue on. And put the next crystal, thread that onto the wire. And then see if that looks okay. That looks pretty good. So don't forget to uh, line up the flat, the straight edge of the crystal against the frame. And then continuing. So we do like that. Wrap around. You're just going to Pull straight down, not super hard, but taut. Do one wrap, and then when we come back around, we're gonna put the next crystal on. And then if you feel like it looks a little bit far apart or something, you can just give it a tiny scooch. Uh, you always wanna check back when you are doing things with lots of weaving or wrapping, just to see if you need any adjustments before, you, before it's too late. Um, okay, that looks good. So you can kind of hold it like this 
Yep, they look like they're pretty consistent or if you don't really mind the consistency, that's totally fine too. This will be really pretty either way just because Swarovski crystals are very sparkly and uh, gradient colors are always really eye-catching. So. And we're gonna keep going here and we're almost done. You're almost there. You're doing great. Uh, if your hands get sweaty like mine do sometimes, you might want to give your finished piece just a, a light polish with a soft cloth, like maybe those cloths that uh, people use to clean their glasses. You can use that to just wipe the crystals a little bit and take your fingerprints uh, and whatever oils off of them so they'll be super extra mega sparkly. Okay. I love this color right here so much. This color is like this salmon color. Uh, there's an actual gemstone that it is named after. It's called Pad Paradja Sapphire. It's an Indian sapphire that has a really cool like orangey pink color. So interesting. All right. Just a few more. Eep. All right. So if you find that it looks like we might wanna, if you want these to go all the way down, Maybe we can scooch a little bit. So this is part of the adjusting that sometimes you have to do when you make, you know, wire wrap stuff. Lots of adjusting. Um, once you get into hammering metal, you will also find that you have to do a lot of adjusting. So when I scooch, I'm kind of using my nail and picking at these wraps right here. Sometimes I'll do the front and then I'll do the back. And then I'll just do each wrap. And I'll just slowly move them down to get the desired effect. Yeah. And then sometimes you can even move this little flower thing if you just kind of individually move all those wraps down. It's like a systematic, so I'll go like this, then I'll go back up because it needs, um, this part needs to move in order for the whole thing to move. So I kind of go back and forth. Okay. All right. That's a little better. And, oops. And for the last crystal here, this little tiny pink one, just line up that straight edge of the crystal against the frame. And we're gonna do some extra coils here close together if you can, you don't have to, but I like it to look kind of neat and tidy. So I try and line up these coils right next to each other. So finishing coils and beginning coils, you can pull them really tight um, like that. Like I usually will pull and use my finger to brace while my, the rest of my hand, my thumb in my hand, uh, in my hand, pull the wire. Okay, snip. And we're going to tuck that down just kind of, uh, you're going to press down and rotate so that it sits nice and flat against the, the frame here. All right, and 
We have this last little last little uh, floret thing to do, this little flower. So let's keep them in their order uh, so you don't lose track of which ones are supposed to go where. You're gonna take this leftover bit of wire. So we're gonna repeat this. Oh, and by the way, if you can see, there is a slight, it doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be so totally straight. Can you see it? It's kind of like just slightly angled which is fine, um, that'll happen. It doesn't have to be totally straight. It'll still be pretty. Okay, so you can, you can put this wherever you want or you can follow the placement in the photo. Um, I don't have my photo in front of me, so I think it's gonna look pretty right here. So you're gonna start the coil, the beginning coil. So do that same method where you have some extra length here and you just to get you going on a couple of wraps and then you're just going to brace that and wrap a few times i'm going to tuck this coil be careful you don't poke yourself when the wire is this short for skinnier thinner wire like this it's really easy to uh, poke your poke yourself literal blood sweat and tears um okay so you're going to finish that off by uh, pressing and kind of turning. You're not pressing super hard. Okay, so if you remember, let me just see that. I'm going to move it up a little bit. So if you remember, we needed some extra space here. Um, same thing with this finishing coil. Um, since we're going to be going back and forth a lot on the frame, um, let's give some space between that beginning coil here. Did I say finishing coil? Sorry if that was confusing. So we'll do two wraps like that. And then we will put the, um, so we're gonna take our first bead here. It's kind of like a light purple. And we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna thread all three teardrops together. Just be careful when you're removing these from the wire. Oh, sorry if you can't see. Uh, because the tip can be delicate. So if you catch and you pull really hard, you don't want to break the tip off. So just do it slowly. Be gentle. Be kind to your pretty little friends. Okay. So same thing here. We are going to try and line it up like that. So that uh, once it looks good, and you don't want it too loose like this, right? You want it to be kind of nice and snug up to the frame. So when that looks good, you're going to hold those in place and be real gentle when you go around the frame. You don't want to pull it so tight because you could crack these little babies. Okay, so after you did that first wrap, we're going to do that same thing. Is it in focus? We're going to go around the front of this pink one, and we're going to thread it through and go behind, go behind the purple one. And, you know, these are going to be flopping around a little bit for this first securing wrap here. So then we're going to come to the front of this light purple one and then we're going to go around the frame just like that wrap around the frame once and then we're going to now do the opposite we're going to go around this light purple one behind and then we're going to come back through to the front of this purple one it's in focus I'm really sorry if it's not <laughs> And then we're going to go behind the pink one. Okay, so now that we have kind of weaved back and forth between all of them, they're more secure, so you can kind of just try and straighten them if needed. Very gently, because those teardrop points can be delicate. So, And just for an added measure, we're going to go one more time, actually two more times. 
So you go behind and then in the front of the other one, go around the frame. So we're gonna, oops. Okay, and then we're gonna go behind, come to the front of the adjacent teardrop and then go behind and come back around to wrap around the frame. And then we're gonna give a few wraps here and do a finishing little coil like we have already. And this you can pull nice and tight. And we'll try and match the number of coils we did on the other side. I think I did four. So we're just gonna snip that on the back of the frame here. And you want to cut with just the tiniest, just a little bit of a nub sticking out. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, so that we can fold it down and it will sort of lie within this width of the frame here. So, ta-da! You might need to like uh, just adjust that a little bit very gently. All right, time to attach. So you take your teardrop thing, little dangle here. This is essentially a handmade chain. You can make it make an entire necklace out of these, this technique here of just making links. Um, and you can make earrings, dangly earrings. So we're going to take this open loop and just hook it in. So the, the putting in part, so you want to uh, have the frame sort of go in that direction of the opening. So you're gonna push through. It's kind of like a corkscrew movement. So you're gonna, you're gonna push it through and do a slight rotation. And that loop looks a little tight to fit our pliers through there. So I'm just gonna like press this wire, press it against the beads so that it will open up the, that loop a little bit. That way we have space to fit here. So you want to, I sometimes will try and hang the frame vertical so that I can move the pliers in this way. It gives me a little bit more, it's a little easier than trying to uh, attach it with the frame like this. You have no space for your pliers. So if you do it this way, then that way it'll sit, the frame will sit parallel with the straight edge of your pliers. And then just try not to clamp down on that wire crossover point. And take your other pliers, and we're gonna wrap once behind. Go around the front, go behind, go around the front, oopsie. And then once you get to the bead, I like to use my fingers and just guide the wire to start going back up. And then once you feel like you ran out of space because your pliers are there, that's a good point to cut. And then when you cut, I don't know if you can see this, but you want to cut about halfway into the width of your coil, the barrel of your coil, and make sure you tuck that end there. And you're going to, oh, actually, I just realized that we need to wrap the this part, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I totally left it out, sorry. So we're gonna attach this frame here. So you're gonna do that same starting method. So take, make a fold, brace this little end of the wire here, and then we can tuck, wrap this a few times. Just be careful you don't poke yourself. And we're gonna tuck. All right. So we can slide this down a little bit, slide your coil closer to that join. And then I'm gonna go behind and then come around the front of the other side of the heart here. And then we're gonna do that figure eight thing we've been doing with the flowers. Um, so you're gonna go around, 
come through the middle here and then go back around the other side of the heart and then wrap the behind come through the middle here go around the front and then go back through the middle and then wrap around the other side so you're just going to make this like figure eight around this portion and then if you see that there is kind of a loop right here we are going to thread through there in a moment okay so you can do with more figure eights if you want but I'm gonna go ahead and just thread through that middle loop there and then go around and maybe thread through a few more times just to make sure they are really nice and secured these two ends of the frame one more time you want to try and guide like um, I guess prevent this loop from getting too squeezed tight because the wire will want to kink up sometimes so I try and use my fingers to give keep that loop nice and loose okay so then we're just going to close we're going to do a finishing coil on this curvy part I mean uh, this curved part of the spiral of the heart let's do four or five wraps and then we're going to cut on the back side here just leave a small nub I don't know if you could see that I'm going to tuck tuck that against the frame all right ta-da all right and then you're going to take the top dangling part and do the same thing as the bottom so we left this open so we could attach later after all this complicated delicate wrapping is done and you're going to you're just gonna squeeze that through and kind of rotate a little corkscrew action and then if this loop doesn't really have enough space for your pliers you can kind of open up the loop by moving this end closer to the to the bead and then now I have enough space to put my pliers we're just gonna wrap and wrap until we get to the bead and it feels nice and tight and snug like the bead doesn't move and then we're gonna move the wrap upwards all right and then we're gonna tuck and then you can check your link make sure it looks nice and straight I think I'm going to just straighten that teeny tiny bit so you can straighten once there's something in the loop it's a little hard to straighten but just grip the loop with at least half of the circle um, and then if you grip that much, you can manipulate the loop like that if you need to. You can bend it. All right, and you are done. Hey again. So I forgot to mention that you always want to check when you have dangling, when you have handmade chain links like this, you want to check and make sure that your finished piece is going to hang in the right direction. Um, so, so chain lengths usually alternate so this one if you notice the loops are facing up and this one the loops are facing sideways and then and then on this one the loops are facing facing us and then that means the ring is going to be facing sideways so when you hang your heart your ring isn't going to be facing it's going to be wanting to hang this way instead of in the front if you hang it in your window or something. So easy fix is you just grip one of these links here with your fingers and use the brass ring to make a half turn so that the two ends of this link are perpendicular. So this one is facing up and then this one is facing the side there. 
And then we're going to do the same checking process for the teardrop. So if you just hold it up, I can't hold it up right now because the camera's facing down. But So if you notice, the links, if we just leave the links how they would hang naturally, which is alternating like this, uh, the teardrop is going to, actually, this one's fine. So I always make this check when I make uh, any jewelry or any sun catchers. Just make sure that everything's facing the right way when you're done. So that's all. Okay, bye again. Ooh, so sparkly. I don't know how to stop the recording. Just press this button. Oh, okay. How about that? <laughs>